bounce the basketball with a bottle of beer or can of beer on top. Catch the beer, then take a sip, and that's the basketball beer challenge. You might have done the basketball beer challenge, but did you know that this is a classic demonstration in physics? It demonstrates the conservation of momentum when two objects collide. This was traditionally demonstrated using a basketball and a tennis ball instead of a can of beer. When you let go of the basketball and the tennis ball at the same time, the tennis ball flies off with a pretty serious velocity. It bounces so much higher compared to the basketball. So what's going on here? Both the basketball and the tennis ball are moving at the same speed right before they hit the ground. Let's say the speed is 4 meters per second. The basketball hits the ground just slightly before the tennis ball does, so it's going to rebound upward with a speed of 4 meters per second, making the assumption that no energy is lost. At some point, the basketball will collide into the falling tennis ball, which is still falling at 4 meters per second in the opposite direction to the basketball. So this is a collision problem that follows the conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. I'm going to go through the mathematics in a moment, but for those of you who prefer understanding the conceptual idea, the tennis ball needs a large velocity to compensate for its small mass in order for momentum to be conserved. So let's dive into the math now. The mass of a basketball is roughly 0.5 of a kilogram. A tennis ball weighs around 0.06 kilograms. Let's work with the equation of conservation of momentum first. I'll write down the equation and then explain what each term means. m1u1 plus m2u2 is equal to m1v1 plus m2v2. I'm going to let m1 be the mass of the basketball, m2 be the mass of the tennis ball, u1 is the basketball's initial velocity, u2 is the tennis ball's initial velocity. V1 and V2 are the final velocities after they have collided. Let's substitute some numbers in. If I set the upward direction as the positive direction, I will need to put a minus sign here because the tennis ball's initial velocity points downward. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. I have two unknowns now in this equation, so I can't solve it yet. But luckily, I know that energy is also conserved. So I can write a second equation that considers their kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is half mv squared. I can cancel out the halves before I substitute. It simplifies down to this. Now that I have two equations, I'm going to cheat and use Wolfram Alpha to help me solve these simultaneous equations. For those of you who haven't used Wolfram before, it is a powerful online computational platform. I'll type in the two equations in these boxes, but I can't use any subscripts, so I'll just replace v1 and v2 with x and y. Wolfram tells me that there are two possible sets of solutions. The first set tells us that the tennis ball's final velocity is 72 over 7, which is 10.3 meters per second. The second solution says that the tennis ball has a negative final velocity. This suggests that it travels downward after the collision. In the experiments that we've seen at the beginning of this video, we saw that the tennis ball shoots upward after the collision. So the solution minus 4 doesn't make any physical sense. We can eliminate this. If the tennis ball's final velocity is 10.3 meters per second, the final velocity of the basketball is 16 divided by 7, which is 2.3 meters per second. So this example here shows us that when a smaller ball is stacked on top of a larger ball and they get dropped together, the smaller ball always travels with a much higher velocity after they collide. Thanks for watching till the end of this video. If you found it useful, be sure to subscribe.